You know, it seems like nowadays movies are getting louder with layers and layers of sound in each moment to the point of sensory overload. But there are those films and those filmmakers who use silence more powerfully than sound. And to understand that, I want to take us back in time to a filmmaker who used silence more loudly than an explosion. I'm talking about the late 20s, where every film studio wanted to match the success of the jazz singer. Wait a minute, wait a minute, you ain't heard nothing yet. Which was the first commercially released film to have synced dialogue. A time in which filmmakers were worried about their precious medium, which up until this point had been strictly based on images. Many were reluctant to make the transition to sound, seeing it as a fad or an unpure dilution of their art form. But those who wouldn't or couldn't make that transition to sound were eventually left behind. Now, Fritz Lang, like many successful silent directors, was reluctant to make that transition to sound. He was as successful as it gets when it comes to silent films making landmark films such as Metropolis, which would be equivalent to a blockbuster today. But in realizing that the medium was moving on without him, along with many other factors, Fritz Lang decided to make his first talkie, M. Considered by most film scholars to be a masterpiece of the early sound era, M is a disturbing story about a child murderer played by Peter Lorre in his first starring role, who is hunted down and brought to justice by Berlin's criminal underworld. When speaking about the film, a lot of people will bring up the striking images, and rightfully so. Faces in the film are highlighted in a way that disturbs and intrigues. In fact, most of the imagery in the film is striking and has a deeper layer of depth to it. Although the images are composed fantastically in their own right, the thing that makes the images stand out the most to me is the silence underneath them. Take for instance the murder in the opening scene. The murder doesn't take place on camera. Instead, what we get is a mother shouting out for her daughter and then silence. Elsie! 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 This silence is combined with three images, an empty dinner plate and a chair, a ball that we saw young Elsie playing with earlier, rolling away from what we can only assume is where her body is, and the balloon given to her by the killer stuck on a power line. These images are haunting, but not because of what they show, quite the opposite actually. These images are pretty innocuous without the information that we were given at the beginning of the film. There's a killer on the loose, and he's going after kids. And when Elsie is met by this mysterious man and doesn't turn up at home, we know her fate. But it's the brilliance and the silence of the film that allows the audience the space to put together what we know up until this point. It makes our imagination work and forces us to picture what happened to Elsie rather than showing us what happened to her, making us active participants in the film. The audience needs the moments of silence to process and let our imagination build the scene for us. Now, there's not really much dialogue throughout the film. Fritz Lang was wise to use his dialogue sparingly. Many early talkies felt the need to talk all the time. Hey, John, the baby's here cute today, ain't he, huh? You bet, just like his dad. Oh, you, you can't do this to me. But Lang takes his silent film sensibilities, allowing his camera to prowl through the streets and the dives, letting us form our opinions based on what we see rather than what we hear. Visuals is all he knew, and cinema, which was going through growing pains during this period, is inherently a visual art form. But one thing that Fritz Lang never lost is that visual language that cinema had been known for. So combining that with sound, and the absence of sound made for a better film. Because there was sound accompanying the film, the silence became even more powerful than it would have been in a silent film. Many times with the film, Fritz Lang chooses to use actual silence, not ambient sound, but actual complete silence. One of the most powerful moments in this film is completely silent, as the captured killer is dragged into the basement and is confronted by the city's assembled criminals. The camera moves around and shows their cold and hardened faces.
Living in our current cinematic landscapes, I'm used to sound being used to draw attention to something, but Fritz Lang did the opposite. He used silence to capture our attention and hook us into what's going on in the story. He demands the audience's attention and his lack of sound. But more important than that, it's where he chose not to use sound that's most important. Every use of silence is powerful and poignant and draws our attention to something. And I can't help but think that films like No Country for Old Men and even A Quiet Place to an extent drew inspiration, whether directly or indirectly, from this. At a time where sound seemed to be taking over and silence seemed to be fading into the background, Fritz Lang took silence and put it at the forefront of his films. But it wasn't a regression to the silent era, instead it was the birth of something new, an artistic use of both sound and image to create something more. That's why M is one of the most brilliant films I've ever seen in my life. And if you haven't seen it, I couldn't recommend it enough.